Good morning. Today is Wednesday the 30th. We're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that they should rather release Barabbas unto them. Mark chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. The moment is filled with tragedy and dripping with irony. The people are about to put to death their long-awaited Messiah and King. Rather than release the Son of God the Father, they insist that the Romans release Barabbas, whose name literally means Son of the Father. The gift had been proffered but refused. Jesus so loved the world that he gave his own life that as many as would believe might become the sons and daughters of God. For what doth it profit a man if a gift is bestowed upon him, and he receive not the gift? Behold, he rejoices not in that which is given unto him, neither rejoices in him who is the giver of the gift. All right. So today is... 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and uh, Christ is the God of Israel and the spiritual rock that guided them. Ancient Israel rebelled against Christ. Paul contrasts true and false sacraments. Maybe it's because I got interrupted a time or two, but I just, I don't understand Paul. I just don't. Like, the way he speaks, I just, I don't know. Oh, I picked a scripture, but I didn't write my statement. Um, anyways, the scripture I picked, I, I could have picked a couple. If you take each verse by itself and not as a whole chapter... It's easier that way, but when you're reading it as a whole, as you're trying to get some sort of context for the verse that you just read by reading the next verse, I just get more and more confused as to what he's trying to say. I don't know. It's maybe it's me. Today's my day off and I was supposed to sleep in, but my brain woke me up at six o'clock in the morning and then Alex came down at 630 and there was no sleeping after that. So Anyways, my verse is chapter 10, verse 32. Give no offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. And this, I chose this just because it's one that I could plainly and clearly understand. Uh, stating that, you know, I must not give offense to anybody, whether they're in the church or out of the church whether I believe they deserve it or not. Um, it's that quote by Neil A. Maxwell. And even though it is true that there must be an opposition in all things, none of us has the personal obligation to provide that opposition. I love that quote. It's literally hanging up right there. It's like, you know, well, their life is too easy and I gotta make it harder for them. No, absolutely not. All right, we've got Jeffrey today, so I can stop my own personal babbling and we can hear what he has to say. It's just a little short one, but still, it's Jeffrey and we love him. A loving Father in heaven does not maliciously lead us into temptation nor have any wish to ensnare us in evil. He has, however, allowed us to come to this mortal world in which we must face temptations of every kind, temptations from men and from devils. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer for strength, for the ability to endure such difficult times. It is a special plea for protection from excessive or unremitted enticements that would threaten our ability to withstand. 
it is an expression of our desire to remain clean. We do, of course, take comfort in knowing that the Lord will not allow us to be tempted beyond our capability to resist. Furthermore, for every temptation that an enemy places before us, the Lord has made an escape that we may be able to bear it. If we then yield to temptation, it may be, it may well be that we did not recognize or did not want the opportunity to escape it. Nevertheless, if we do falter, the privilege of repenting is simply further confirmation that our Father in heaven does not wish us to be entangled in sin. Through the gift of his Son, he has provided the means for us to be free from evil, even after the fact, if we are willing to pay the price. Our own best efforts and good judgment, coupled with honest prayer to our Heavenly Father, will enable us to walk better the narrow path that is free from the headache, nope, the heartache, sorrow, and despair that transgression inevitably brings. That is the personal ability and divine assistance for which Jesus prayed. Sometimes I just have to sit, sit in Jeffrey's words and take into account how they apply to my life or when I have seen them um, be fulfilled in my life. And not all the time can I express those into words and share with you guys, mainly because it takes a minute for me to process because <laughs> I'm crazy like that. But anyways... I'm going to leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 30th. Tomorrow is the last day of August. Fall is just around the corner. This prayer, oh, there's, okay, this prayer is for, uh, preservance, perseverance. There's no R in there, so I... We'll find out if I can read or pronounce words, which we all know I can't. And then the next one is, uh, which the first one is a Jealousian Sacramentary. And then the other one is Patience and Long Suffering, which is anonymous. O God, who hast willed that the gate of mercy should stand ever open to the faithful, mercifully bestow on us the grace of P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E -E -E. Preservance? Se Perseverance? No? It's not sir, it's sev. Preservance? I don't know. Okay. It's early. Uh, that we may never turn aside from him who is the way, the truth, and the life, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why can't I pr pronounce that word? Preservance. I don't know. Let's move on to something I can pronounce. Patience and long-suffering. O God, whose glorious power is ever-present to strengthen our weaknesses, help us to lean in faith upon the might of that power whenever the sorrow and toils of life threaten to overwhelm us. Grant us patience in the small trials of every day and endurance in the storms of pain and grief. And grant to us, O Lord our God, that both the patience and the long suffering may be irrad irradiated by the joy of Christ our Lord, who is the treasure of our desiring, and so make us worthy at last in the fellowship of his sufferings to come to the kingdom of his saints in light. I struggled through that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that was 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And tomorrow we do chapter 11 verses 1 through 17. It's just the way it is, peeps.
It's just the way it is. All right. That's all. I got to get going. I don't want to. What are you going to do? All right. I love you all. Have a great day. See you later.